Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is part six of the building uh, data science with JavaScript. And today I'm going to be talking about finishing the data processing and enrichment services. Uh, so, if, you know, if you're interested in the more details, you can always watch the live streams. And uh, before we actually get to the whole explanation of what I did on the live streams, I want to ask you to fill out a survey. There should be a link in the description to this video. That should help me define the better stream times for everyone. You know, I want more people to watch my live streams, obviously. And um, so far, I've been doing it quite randomly. So I want to pick a day, pick time that will uh, work for most of people and stick to it. So please, if you're interested in that stuff, uh, fill the survey out. Again, it's the link is in the description. Um, yeah, let's let's make this happen. Let's make the streams better. Now, um, let's talk about what we did. So I've, um, I guess I can just do it here. Uh, I've built um, four services, I think. So we'll start with the first one, which is a keyword extraction service, uh, keywords processing services called here. So I'm going to open the code here and, uh, you know, collapse all of that stuff. Let me move it here. Right, so the service itself is pretty trivial. Uh, it takes in the um, again, I'm not going to talk about the micro core you know, and the setup and everything because this is the boring bits that I already talked about multiple times. I'm going to talk specifically about what it does and how it does it, right? So this one uh, takes in the text and extracts keywords, right? So we have this keywords file. It uses the retext uh, module, which is a Node.js module, um, which basically uh, this is a wrong, wrong thing. This, uh, so it should be read retext uh, keywords. So basically, it's a pluggable um, keyword processing uh, or text processing framework that has a bunch of plugins, including retext keywords that extracts keywords. Well, you know, decently enough for our case, I guess it's not uh, state of the art, but you know, it works for us and it's really easy to set up. So basically, we have this retext, retext keywords, and uh, an LCST to string module that converts the uh, natural language processing format to strings. And all we do is essentially use the example from here and dispatch keywords and key phrases as a result, which is later on saved in a knowledge base. That's it. So that's all we do. Again, unit tests as a must, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, nothing fancy here. Um, okay, so this was the first keyword processing service. Next one is I thought it would be cool to have a summarization service because you know, you um, all right, uh, wait a second, because uh, like you have those huge articles, and you don't always want to read them. And even though the um, uh, open critic does provide short abstracts for or like short um, summaries, I guess, for uh, the articles, they don't really provide the longer summary that explains what the hell is going on. So I thought, you know, let's generate a summary and see, maybe it's good enough for us. So for summaries, I took the another Node.js library, which is uh, node summary. Uh, it's basically a copy or based off the Python implementation, which is actually pretty good. Uh, and yeah, so it's pretty easy to use, you just throw in the title and content. In our case, we don't really have any title. So we'll only throw in the text. And you get a summary back. That's basically all it does nothing fancy here. Now we come to an interesting part. So uh, wait a second, let me just do this. Um, next service is entity extraction service, which is uh, that is the wrong thing to type, which tries to extract um, named entities from the text you throw into it. So this in this case, it actually is not a node module, it uses a third party service, which is called Fox or Federated Knowledge Extraction Framework, uh, which is developed by my colleagues here at the university where I work, and uh, is actually very good at, at doing that stuff. Uh, so you can you can I will paste the link in the description, you can check out uh, the stuff for yourself. Uh, where is my demo? What is wrong with that? Ah, here we go. Okay. Uh, I guess I cash was dead. So yeah, basically, the idea is that you input the text, you say which language it is, you say what kind of extraction type do you want rela uh, relation extraction in, or named entity, we are interested in named entities, say the output format. in our case, it was JSON LD, uh, because, uh, you know, it's easier to work with JSON in JavaScript. And there you go. Okay, I guess the um, JSON LD is not exactly easiest to read manually. But if we ask for turtle, you will see that, okay, here's 
it detected a couple of people, a couple of places and the university, right? And or organization in this case. And the cool thing is if it can, it will actually link those places to um, existing entities. Like for example, uh, if we take the University of Leipzig, you will see that it is actually linked to uh, DBpedia later on, right? Um, we'll talk about what DBpedia is and how we use it in the next phase. So DBpedia, uh, like, let's say it's linked to Wikipedia, right? So what we do here is we use NodeFetch to send a request to it. And then we use JSONLD parser to actually expand it and filter uh, by types, which is basically uh, we're interested in locations, organizations, and people, right? And then we return those three uh, arrays as a result. So um, if you if we have a look at the unit test, you will see that you know if you throw in the Bungie article that we have in fixtures as a test one, it will detect Earth and Europe as locations, which is you know something you would expect. It will detect Red Legion as an organization, which is kind of cool. So this is the cool part. Even if it doesn't find the organization in uh, Wikipedia, it will still detect that this is organization the text is talking about. And then it will generate those like bollocksy links, basically not meaning links that say not in Wiki. And it will assign random, like not random, but basically, you know, concatenated name, uh, camel case name value, I believe. And it detects uh, Bungie as a person, which is not quite correct, but I guess it was spoken about in a context of people. And then it detects Gina Torres for some reason. I, I'm not sure why it's there. It's probably because the article is not cleaned correctly. You know, the uh, unfluff text extraction actually added some other stuff or maybe it's an author so i'm not sure but yeah so um we get those people organizations and locations the problem is they are just name and the url to the dbpedia or this is the i will talk about it in a second again uh and we want to know more information about it right so those are um processing services and now let's talk about enrichment service so uh first of all i want to show you uh, story service. So I modified the story service to support enrichments. Uh, the idea here is uh, whenever the update comes, it sends it to our. Um, so wait, okay, when the store comes, so this is from the input, right? It takes all the processors with type processor, so they now have types and configs, and sends it to processing. So basically, Fox, keyword extraction, summaries, all that stuff, right? Uh, when the processor done uh, finishes the processing, it will send the update query, right? The update query in order updates the document and then sends it for enrichment. And then enrichment is actually what happens uh, for DBpedia. And then we have another one enrich, which just basically updates the data. So now let's talk about enrichment. When we only have one enrichment thing, which is the DBpedia um, enrichment. Um, the way it works is, uh, well, quite simple, right? So DBpedia has, uh, well, first let's talk what DBpedia is. So DBpedia is, um, yeah, it's basically an effort to extract structured information from Wikipedia, as you can see here. So the idea is that Wikipedia, as you know, I mean, everybody uses Wikipedia, right? Um, is a very good knowledge base with a tons of information, right? So you can find literally anything here. The problem is all of that information is, or most of it is in structure, right? So if I open um, Destiny 2, for example, we will see that there is actually a whole bunch of information that human can understand very easily. So there's developed by Bungie, published by Activision. I understand it without too much effort. But if we uh, feed that to a machine, there will be no way that it will know that who's a developer, who's a publisher. So it's really hard to build those links, right? There's this box on the right, which has more structured format. And this is actually what primarily used by DBpedia extractors to extract uh, knowledge from you. So DBpedia is actually, um, let's see, Destiny 2. I think it should be like this. Yeah, DBpedia is a conversion of all the data that tries to extract as much as possible from that Wikipedia page and transform it into um, knowledge that can be consumed by machines, basically, right? So here's, for example, if we take Destiny 2, you can see that it has, uh, so basically the DBpedia stores everything in ARIA format, which is uh, represented as triples. 
the idea is quite simple. You have a subject, then you have, um, I mean, I can do this predicate and you have object, right? This is a triple. So basically in this case, there's for example, a predicate composer, which means that destiny video game has a composer and there's three of them. There's Paul McCartney, Martin Donnell and Michael Salvatore. And for example, it has computing platform, which is this, this, and this. And uh, the cool thing is that um, because it's in triples, you can ask queries about it. And queries can be very complex. I mean, in our case, the query is very simple. We just say that the URL which we give in should have, uh, so we just ask for label, for abstract, and for external links. That's it, right? And we filter them by language. So we only want English labels and English abstracts. The cool thing is that you can do queries. So for example, we have this uh, just to show you a bit more about RDF and uh, sparkly and all that kind of stuff. So we have this, um, we have this triple here, right? So we can say, uh, this is going to be the OA thing as well. So we have a destiny game that has a composer Paul McCartney, right? So what we can say is we can say, uh, Paul uh, so we can say, find me all video games. So this, this is how you write it in Sparkly, right? So we have video games. Uh, the question mark means it's a variable. Uh, so we, we want video games where composer is Paul, Mac, uh, Paul McCartney. And, but the thing is, if you just say, give me everything where composer is Paul McCartney, you'll get like movies, um, I don't know, um, stage shows, whatever you can imagine, right? But we only want video games. And we want to say, so video game, is uh, it probably has a type that is video game, right? So um, let's see, is there a type field, type soundtrack? Not RDF, RDF type, yeah. So we have this RDF type field. We, we say that video game should be of type uh, DBO video game, right? And if you execute this query, so if we actually go, there's a dbpedia.org slash sparkle, so this is a sparkly endpoint where you can query um, easily. We say video game where tan, 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 we do this, we insert this. Um, I don't I don't know if they prepend the okay, they don't prepend the your game. I, I the typo here. I don't know if they prepend the prefixes. Yeah, okay. So he only composed for destiny. This is the result, you know. But this is the expected result, and this is the whole like cool thing about um sparkling language is that you can do this very complex uh, request that has a lot of levels. So, I mean, we did a very simple one, you know, we selected all things that of type video game where Paul McCartney is a composer. Obviously you can do way more complex thing. You can ask for a thing like, you know, um, give me all video games where composer was born in some city. So if we re replace this to composer, we can add another triple that would say composer, um, like if we open, where's the Paul, Paul McCartney. So if we open Paul McCartney, he will probably have a field uh, or an, uh, birthplace or something, I guess. Yeah, birthplace, here you go. You can say that the birthplace should be something, right? So in this case, for example, Liverpool. The cool thing is that uh, all those bird, like the places, they actually have coordinates and boundaries and Sparkly supports um, like area searches, right? So you can ask for video games where composers were people who was born in Europe, for example. That is quite easy to do with Sparkly. Doing something like this with any other query language would be hell. Here it's very similar, very trivial. Okay, but that is like short discourse into what DBPD and Sparkly is. So we have this simple, like super stupid and simple query that just gets us label abstract and external links. We just send it to um, DBpedia. We get the uh, Sparkly JSON back, parse it and return the URL abstracts labels and basically return the DBpedia entities field. That's it, right? Um, again, unit tests just to make sure it works. So we have this uh, tests here. I mock the, um, endpoint return and uh, so that you know I can actually validate it it returns correctly and that's basically it so that's all we did in this case uh, we now have um, let me open this so we now have the um, uh, services file filled so we have input we have our processing we have a basic enrichment and we have our utility service that throws all of that into a um, MongoDB 
So next we're gonna build our uh, REST API and user interface. REST API will be standalone. It will interface with the same MongoDB, but it will be only uh, read-only access, right? So that only one thing will do writes in there, which means there should not be any collisions. Uh, and uh, UI will use this REST API to render stuff. So I guess uh, we're gonna start probably building them together because uh, building them separately would be a bit tricky because I'm not sure what kind of uh, REST endpoints we would need, but we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes. Once again, REST API, uh, you know what? I'm thinking that REST API, we are gonna build using Fastify because I've been looking at this framework for some time. It's almost 1.0. So there's a ticket that is nearly closed. It looks really good. It has a very similar to uh, API to Express.js. And uh, I think it's even compatible with Express middlewares. So good chance to try it out. And the UI we're gonna do with the uh, Vue.js, uh, as many of you asked, I think there is a really cool thing called uh, Nux.js. So uh, because I'm a huge fan of Next.js for React, we're gonna use this. This is basically the same, but for Vue.js, it's like zero setup thing where you just, you need a project, you know, I mean, if you do it manually, you just save Nuxt and run dev, that's it, you're done. So it's very simple, very trivial. Um, we're gonna use that. Um, I did use Vue.js before, um, but for like very simple projects where I throw in the Vue.js as a script tag and HTML, you know, like one pagers where you need to show something quick. We're gonna use it a bit more complexly here, uh, do some visualizations and, uh, maybe use D3JS, I guess. We would need that probably. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, that's about it. So that's that's it for all the processing and enrichment services. Uh, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments as usual. I will answer them. And please take that survey about streaming. I really want more of you to watch me live and, you know, interact, ask questions and all that stuff. Because I know, you know, a lot of you have questions and I would be happy to discuss stuff and um, figure out what's what's hard for you and what's not, uh, what should I focus more on and what should I skip faster over in my live streams. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and as usual, I see you next time. Bye.